Two of the nice features of Windows NT are portability and scalability. Here to show us what that means are Ray Court of Microsoft and also back with us Mike Nash of Microsoft. Ray, we're going to start with you and talk about portability and what does that mean? Well, what we have here is the same consistent Windows user interface, but of course Win it's Windows NT that's running here and it's running on a different microprocessor chip. All right, so what do we have over here on this NetPower PC? Well, they say that seeing is believing. If I use this little utility here, I can show you what hardware we have installed in this machine. If I choose hardware, you can see that my CPU type is actually a MIPS microprocessor. So we're not running a 486 or a Pentium here. This is a MIPS R4000, and we're running NT. Correct. What's the advantage to me, of, to me of being able to do this? The advantage of being able to do this is that you can integrate a new generation of 32-bit applications with your most popular applications, for example, like Excel, 1, 2, 3 for Windows or WordPerfect. So I'm running, you're running 16-bit Excel up here. I'm running 16-bit Excel, and in the background I have a 32-bit application called PV Wave, which is used to visualize data. So what I'm going to do is to hide this data here. So that's data coming out of Excel. This is data coming out of Excel, Excel to PV Wave, 16-bit to 32-bit, okay. and I'm going to plot that information so that we can see it in a different form. And as you can see, as the charts begin to roll out on the screen here, these are quite complex plots. So what you're able to do is use your familiar Excel, which you could have been running on in your in your 3.1 mode or whatever. With NT, you can actually talk now to this 32-bit PV Wave application. Absolutely. In essence, what you're doing here is actually using the best tools for the appropriate job. Okay, let's turn to the next platform here. You've got a digital machine, so I, I won't guess. You show me again what, okay. what CPU we're running I'll here. use our little utility again, and if I uh, select the hardware option, it tells me what type of CPU I'm running. And here it says I'm running a DEC Alpha processor. Okay, so here NT is running under an Alpha chip. Correct. And show me what I can do with this. Okay, what I'm running here is Hyperion, which is a, a corporate level financial management application. And what it allows me to do is to visualize my corporation very easily, very graphically. We're using the Windows interface here. I can do things like drag and drop sections of my company. Mm -hmm. So if I say I want to move product production from Portugal and move it to the American region and then I can go and have a look later and see if I consolidate that information what that means on my numbers. So if we end out here I'll save the change to my organization. Mm -hmm. Bit of mouse problems there. And we choose consolidation. I select the total corporation here. I choose options, consolidate all, and we look down in the bottom here, and this is consolidating 12 megabytes of data, and it's finished. So you've really recalculated this gigantic spreadsheet in a couple of seconds. In a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. on, on Windows 3.1, that would normally take several minutes. Okay. Thank you very much, Ray. Let's move along from portability to scalability and talk to Mike again. And Mike, what are you going to show us uh, about scalability then? Well, Stuart, scalability has a lot to do with uh, the way we can harness new hardware. What I have running here is the server version of Windows NT, a product called Microsoft Windows NT Advanced Server. And Windows NT Advanced Server is much more than just a file and print server. It's actually designed to be an application server, so that we can run server applications and have multiple users share information. Mm -hmm. What we're doing here is running SQL Server on a 4-CPU compact ProLiant 4000. And actually, as you can see from these transaction processing numbers, we're able to deliver about 290 transactions per second. And just for reference, a mini computer does about mid, mid to high 200s and really the high end of the mini computer class. So what you're saying is using a four processor machine like this and NT at a relatively low cost, we can really get mini computer performance. Exactly. And it has a lot to do with Windows NT's ability to share the load, if you will, across the four CPUs. In fact, why don't we take a look at how we do that. In the performance monitor, I can actually monitor CPU utilization. So what I want to do is actually look at how we're sharing the load so across our four these four CPUs uh -huh. in the system. Take a look here at this histogram. What you can see is we're pretty evenly spreading so the load. Each color is representing one of the Pentium chips inside the compact. Exactly. Now, SQL Server is designed to be very easy to use as well. We want to make it possible for people that maybe don't know so much about application servers to, to use solutions based on Windows NT and SQL Server. Actually, this is the SQL Server Manager. And I can actually start and stop SQL Server using a very easy and intuitive stoplight. And as you'll see, as I double click and stop the server, it automatically will, will bring transaction zero, yeah. processing and the CPU utilization right to zero. All right, so again, the point in scalability is NT can kind of work with the hardware it has. You crank it up here with four Pentiums, it'll crank up to take advantage of that. It could work with one, a one-chip PC, et cetera. Exactly. All right, now, if you're using Advanced Server, I take it the point is network management. And show me some of the other network management tools in NT Advanced Server. Very good point, Stuart. Really, what we're trying to do here is to do the best of what file servers and traditional PC class servers did, and really combine that with the best of what many computers and mainframes did in terms of manageability. Mm -hmm. And a big part of managing the system is managing the users that right. need to access it. 
go in here and take a look at your, at your account here, and we've actually created one that look at the groups that you're a member of and show that you're a member of the Computer Chronicles and Domain Users group. But we want to make you an administrator here as well. So by simply dragging and dropping the administrator group onto your profile, I can automatically give you all the rights and privileges mm -hmm. that an administrator on the system would get. You can also look to control other parameters of your account, like the hours that you're allowed to log on to the system. And in fact, for some reason, we've disabled your ability to log on on Tuesday evenings. We want to re-enable that. Just touch the Allow box. And you automatically get the ability to uh -huh. log on at all times. What other network management features can you show me? Another important aspect of network management is the ability to manage groups of servers and workstations together from a single point of management. So we have a product here, a process here called the Server Manager, which allows us to drill down and look at any server on the system. I'll look again at this four CPU per line that we've been using today, and look and see what users are connected to it. You can see that just the administrator from the other machine is logged on here. We can look and see the share points, the files that are running on this machine. And look and see all, all the shares that are allowed from this machine. I can also look to see what services are running here. I can actually look to see all the applications and server-based mm -hmm. processes that are running on this machine. The next thing that's really interesting about Windows NT is something called the Event Viewer. The Microsoft Windows NT Advanced Server ships with, with this product that allows you to look and see all the things that have occurred on the system for as far back really as you want to keep uh -huh. the logs. So we can look and see a detailed breakdown of every instance of anything that's happened on this machine since it was first booted.